Hi, my name is Dominic, and I'd like to welcome you to Susie Luther Ancient World, this deceptively strategic tile lane game published and developed by Inside Out Games. I'm quickly going to tell you how to set up the game and get playing in the cooperative mode. The first thing you should do is gather 15 random city tiles per player and mix those together to form a tile stack. After that, you'll need to prepare the draw bag by placing all of the small commoners inside. Place the tile stack in the center of the table and place one settler track midway between each player. Players draw a town square at random and place it face up in their play area. Players will then choose the color of their starting tiles. The player with the lowest number on their town square is the first player and should take the active player token. The settler tracks should be flipped to the cooperative side and left empty. Players will be cooperating to empty these shared tracks, which will be filling up with incoming settlers. Lay out three city tiles face up to create the supply players will be drawing from. Shuffle together all the cooperative monuments and lay out a number equal to your difficulty setting. Place all the large nobles in a supply and choose one of the ten emperor edicts at random. And with your bag of commoners, be ready to play. The gameplay is similar to that of the competitive game. Play a tile, draw a tile. The goal is to create a closed off city block or district. Once you've done that, you're able to bring in settlers from either of your two shared tracks. These settlers have requirements including the proper landmarks, the colored buildings, and the availability of vacant houses, the white roofed buildings. The other way to use a district is to build a monument which contains unique objectives that their city must reach by the end of the game. After playing a tile, you may not discard any tiles, but you can draw any one of the three in the supply. The supply is refilled, play then rotates to your left. And this is where things really change. At the start of each player's turn, they will draw a commoner at random from the bag. They must then add it to either of their shared tracks. The first commoner goes to the front of the line at the city gate, and each subsequent settler will be placed behind the last. These settlers must be taken off in order, starting at the front of the line with the line moving up space is becoming available. There are two important things to note about these tracks. Firstly, if ever a commoner is placed behind another commoner of the same color, both return to the bag and are replaced with a noble of that color. Nobles, you may not know, are pickier and therefore harder to clear. Secondly, if any track in play fills up to the point where a settler is placed on the skull icon at the bottom, all players will immediately lose the game. But don't worry, that's not the only way to lose. Remember, the Emperor's Edict you place during the setup. That is a game changer, or rule breaker, that must be followed, or again, all players lose the game. But wait, there's more. During setup, you place a certain number of monuments for the difficulty setup. If you don't have the required number of monuments built, or even if you do, but their individual objectives are not met, that's right, you also lose the game. Hey, life was tough back then, so how do you win? You must cooperate perfectly with your neighbors to keep those tracks clean, remind each other about the edict, discuss the best placement of monuments, and work together for optimal tile distribution. Does that sound tricky? Good, because it is. So work together, or the next time the emperor collects your taxes, he might also collect your head. Thanks for watching, and check out the competitive video to see how the game changes.